بسم اللہ الرحیم اوکے گائز وی آر اسٹڈینگ دی ایکولیبریم آف ریجڈ باڈیز اینڈ ان دیٹ وی گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی ٹوڈے اباؤٹ دی آبجیکٹس اینڈ ایکولیبریم اینڈ انڈر دیٹ وی شیل بی ڈسکسنگ دا کیسز ویئر وی ہیو دا راڈس اور دی دا لیڈرز دا لیڈرز لیننگ اگینسٹ دا والس ٹھیک ہے سو لیٹس اسٹارٹ دیٹ let me just one minute okay we shall learn this uh, through these examples here it says consider a uniform ladder ab now when it says uniform ladder you must pick that it means um its uh, its mass is evenly divided and you can just take it as a rod here okay so its mass is going to act exactly at the center of this because he has given us its length that is to a So you can see that this is A over here, this is A over here. And let me just draw this down like this. This is your mg, the, the weight of uh, um, this ladder or the mass is acting at the very center of this ladder over here, okay? The ladder makes an angle of theta with the wall where tan theta is three over four, I think, yeah. We were given this tan theta as three over four. From here, we should quickly find out, okay, okay, this sine theta would be three over five and cos theta would be four over five, okay. Um, now he says, can we find the range of values of the coefficient of friction here that would keep the ladder from slipping? You can see that he has told us that um, it is uh, resting against a smooth vertical wall. So that means there is no friction at this part over here because the wall is smooth, but uh, it, there is a rough horizontal floor. So that means um, like, you know, if this is the ladder, so the ladder would like to slip in this way. It would like to go in this direction. Therefore, this F is a frictional force that is exact acting exactly in the opposite direction over here, okay? And you people know about the limiting friction here. Uh, if this uh, has to remain in equilibrium, so that means that this F would be less than or equal to the mu R, the maximum friction over here, okay? Let me write this as R1 here. This is mu R1. And I don't like this letter S here. Let me keep it as R2 over here, okay? so. R1 is the normal contact force of this ladder uh, as it is in contact with the floor over here. R2 is the normal contact force of the ladder that, as it is in contact with the with this wall over here, okay? So uh, your mechanics is all about knowing the forces, the direction of the forces, and then you um, your ability to resolve those forces Uh, parallel and perpendicular to the required directions. So let us see how many horizontal forces do we have right now. So we have to see how many horizontal forces do we have right now here. Sorry, I'm putting the dot here. Now horizontally, we have this F, which is acting towards the wall, that is equal to this R2. That is the normal contact of the for, uh, I mean, force of this ladder against this wall. So horizontally you have F equal to R2. So I'm going to keep on naming these equations here. Okay. Now secondly, uh, if you look at the vertical forces here, the vertical forces, uh, the vertical forces that we have right now, uh, we have this R1, this normal contact force uh, to the floor, this ladder. So this R1, that is equal to this Mg over here. That is my second equation over here. And let me uh, keep this as my relation number three over here. Okay. Now let's try to find the moments um, Sir, about- Can you explain relation number three? Yeah, that is the limiting friction beta here. Don't you remember all those discussions about the limiting fr friction? I Now let us find out moments about B. Moments about B. 
you have to choose an appropriate point here about which you have you're going to calculate the moments you can do that about a as well if you want to do that you can do that about m and i i'm finding this most feasible to do that about this point d acha bachcho now about b look at this force it is going to create an impact like you know if i just show it like this in this direction and this is going to go in this direction okay uh, if you imagine this is the pivot over here okay and there are these are the forces these are the weights over here so now uh this you have to see that this this is the vertical force over here and you need to know how much is this distance over here okay if this is theta over here this one is going to be theta as well here can i say this distance over here is a sin theta yes this is a sin theta so let me say that this a sin theta times um mg that is equal to because this the uh, this ladder is in equilibrium right now so the moments uh, about this b clockwise and anti clockwise should be equal to each other now you have to see that how much is this distance over here because this force is going to be like this remember this is the distance this is the pivot over here if this is your remember that o a times this force okay so this this distance is going to be if this is theta over here i can say that this is your theta over here so this distance is going to be 2 a cos theta 2 a cos theta i think There shouldn't it be zero because it's like zero distance from the pivot. Beta, this, this, distance. this is the distance. Beta, perpendicular. Oh, this is the Fatma. This is the direction of your force. This is your R two. Okay, and the perpendicular distance from here is going to be two a cos theta. This is how this force R two is going to act here. Okay? okay, so this is going to be two a cos theta. Times R two to a cos theta times R two. So let us use the values of sine theta and cos theta over here. I can directly cancel out this a with the a right now. Sine theta we have as three over five. This is m g, and this is two into four over five R two. And again, fives are cancelled, so your R two is going to be. Three over eight mg. Let me call this equation number four over here. Okay. I have to reach to this. I have to find this f. I have to find this r one so that we can determine this mu over here. Now, this f is r two, and then then r two is equal to this. So can I say from one and four? From one and four. i have um f equals 3 over 8 mg okay and then similarly from 2 and 3 let me call this relation number 1 and then from i have numbered these equations so that you can relate to them from 2 and 3 we can say that uh this f is less than or equal to mu times mg because your r1 is mg so this is your second relation here and they are both in terms of f now from 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 okay we can say that this 3 over 8 mg is less than or equal to mu times mg so your mg is cancelled with the mg so that means this mu has to be greater than or equal to 3 over 8 if you want this ladder not to slip on this floor so let's move on to the next case i'll have to clear all of this okay and now let's go on to this example over here इसको मैं यहाँ रख लेता हूँ एंड देन आई कवर ऑल द रेस्ट हेयर ओके इन द मीन वाइल यू शुड बी रीडिंग दिस स्टेटमेंट हेयर दैट व्हाट डज दिस क्वेश्चन से हेयर ठीक है ट्राई टू गो थ्रू दिस क्वेश्चन 
and then I'll be doing it. Okay, it says a uniform ladder is placed against a smooth vertical. Now you must underline this word smooth vertical wall that it, it would mean that there will be no friction between the wall and the ladder. Okay, and a horizontal uh, rough horizontal floor that means there would be frictional force between the ladder and this floor here. The ladder is of length A and mass 2m. So let's suppose here is the midpoint of this like you know ladder. And let me show this down here. That is 2mg. That is the weight of this, um, this ladder. Okay. And since the length of the ladder is A, so I should be writing this as A over 2. And this is your A over 2 over here. Okay. And let me call this point A here. This is the point B over here. Okay. And let's show these forces. So we have here, let me call this R1, okay? And this is the R2 over here. These are the normal contact forces here, okay? This is the R2. And then I have to show the frictional force in this direction here, okay? Obviously, the, the this ladder would slip in this direction, okay? And then it says there is an angle of 30 degrees with the vertical wall and the ladder, okay? I can say that this angle would be 30 degrees here as well. A painter of mass 5M stands one quarter of the way up the ladder. The one quarter would mean the midpoint of these two here. So its weight is, let me show its weight here is, try to draw a bit longer line because this is 2MG and this one is going to be 5MG here just to keep a difference between, I mean, the longer line would be showing a longer, um, a greater magnitude. Again, and this uh, is going to be 30 degrees over here. Okay, now it says, um, and the ladder is on the point of slipping. Okay, so we have the limiting friction acting over here right now. So our F is going to be, uh, again, less than or equal to mu R here. And in, in this case, especially this would be F would be equal to mu R here because it's on the point of slipping. So we can say that F is equal to mu R, okay? It says find the minimum coefficient of friction required to prevent the ladder from slipping, okay? So now let's start this. We should be well aware of the forces that we have right now. So let me ask you that what are the horizontal forces here and what is the relationship between them? Obviously right now this, this is uh, in equilibrium. So first of all, we can say that your F is equal to R1. That is my first relation here. And then um, the vertical forces. We have the vertical forces here and Vertically, we have R2, and that is equal to, can I simply write that equal to 7mg here, Hannah? That is 7mg. There is a second relation here. And this one is my third relation here. I'm, I'm still interested using in, in, in using this inequality sign because he's asking for the minimum coefficient of friction, though we are sure that right now F is absolutely equal to mu R over here, okay? so. Now, uh, let us find out moments about B, okay? Moments about B. When you're going to go for the moments, guys, let me write this, moments about B. Obviously, the moment depends on two things. One is the force, other is the, the perpendicular distance of that force from the pivot there, okay? So, um, now you see that these two forces are going to create a moment in this direction, and this is going to create a moment in this direction. So the moments created by these two vertical forces, they, these are anti-clockwise, and that would be equal to the clockwise moment here uh, of that R1, okay? So uh, can I say this distance, uh, this is A over four here, so this much, can I say this is A over four sine 30, Anna? And this much is going to be A over two sine 30. And let me use 
pink color for this distance here. Hmm. This force is going to go in this direction. So this distance is going to be, uh, if this is 30 degrees, this is going to be 30 degrees here. So that is going to be A cos 30. Okay? You should be very good at your trigonometry, guys. Achha, now, uh, moments about B. First of all, um, of, of this uh, painter, okay? So this painter's weight is 5 mg. This is 5 mg times A over 4 sine 30. And let me write sine 30 as half because we know that sine 30 is half. Plus um, this ladder's weight, that is 2 mg here. This is 2 mg, this force times the, this distance is A over 2. And we know that sine 30 is half. And that is equal to this distance and this R1. This is R1 times A cos 30. And we know that cos 30 is under root 3 over 2. I don't know. Let's do that simplification from here. All of them, they have got A's with them. So I'm going to cancel out the A's, A's, and A's from here. Okay. So we have, um, now they all have, I mean, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. So I'm canceling all these halves here. So I'm left with, um, now this is this has 4, this is a 2. So I'm going to multiply the whole equation by 4. So I have 5 mg plus um, 2. 2s are 4 mg. And that is equal to 4 under root 3 R1. You have to keep an eye on this working. I might have made any silly mistake here. So this R1 is going to be 9 mg over, my 9 is looking like G here, 9 mg over 4 under root 3. So this is the R1, okay? And you know, if you look at this, let me name this as a third relation. From 1 and 3, we can say uh, from 1 and 3, let me say that this F is equal to 9 mg over 4 under root 3, okay? And then from um, this, um, we have this R2 over here. And I should have written here R2. You didn't tell me that I, I haven't mentioned this R2 because this is the coefficient of friction times this R, the normal contact force here is R2. So from two and three, from two and three, from two and three, I have this F. Now this is my relation number one here. This F is going to be less than or equal to mu times seven mg. Let's call this relation number two here. So from one and two, from one and two, guys, you have, you are left with nine mg over four under root three, that is less than mu into seven mg, okay? So this mg is canceled with this mg. So this is going to be mu is going to be greater than or equal to nine over 28 under root three times 28. And if you want to rationalize this, this would be three under root three over 28, something like that. So this mu would be three under root three over 28. So the minimum, um, um, I mean, coefficient of friction is going to be this three under root three over 28. That is required so that this ladder does not slip here. A uniform rod of mass M and length to A is held in equilibrium. Okay, equilibrium, we pick this. These are the key words basically by a light in inelastic string of length to A. Okay, so here is that string to A. So now there's something new for you people that, you know, um, you will be doing, uh, uh, I mean, a full-fledged chapter on this connected particles. Like, you know, you, see, you can see this tension in the string. This is upwards over here. Uh, just to make it clear, suppose you, you are 
uh, like suppose there's a bag, handbag, you're picking your, this is a very cool handbag. It's strip is like this, and this is your hand over here, okay? Now, uh, if the weight of the handbag is suppose five mg, hmm, then this strip would have a tension T over here, balancing, not allowing this bag to go down on the ground, okay? So if this is an equilibrium, this is not falling down or not moving up, then this tension would be equal to five mg. Similarly, this string over here is, uh, has kept this rod and balances connected here. So the tension in the string is in this direction. You can see that, okay? Achha. So uh, we have the length of the string to A. Yes, we have that length here. And by a frictional force due to the rod's contact with a rough vertical wall. Now this time, this wall over here is vertical. Can you imagine this is a rod on, on one side at point A, this is just in contact with the wall. On the other side, this has been connected with the string. So this is in equilibrium. This is not slipping down over here. It is in equilibrium, okay? It says um, um, the angle between the string and the rod is 60 degrees. Now this is 60 degrees over here. You can imagine, you can assume that there would be 60 degrees as well and here, it would be 60 degrees as well, because these two lengths are equal. This is 2A, this is 2A. Therefore, this is altogether forming um, an equilateral triangle, okay? Now, it says that the rod is on the point of slipping downwards. Now, this is very important information. If the rod is about to slip, this is not slipping, this is about to slip. That means we are in a state of limiting equilibrium over here, okay? There is the limiting equilibrium. So your frictional force is absolutely equal to mu r over here, okay? And you can see that since it is about to slip downwards, the frictional force is being shown upwards. This is being shown upwards. Suppose if it was about to slip upwards, then the frictional force had to be downwards over here. Okay, now it says by resolving forces and taking moments at an appropriate point, find a range of values of mu so that rod does slip down. Okay, now it's saying does slip down, down. I'll be doing all the working, just keeping one word here, does not slip down, okay? And at the end, I will write the reverse of that answer, okay? So that is more uh, comfortable thing to do over here. Now, uh, now, let's once again see how many forces do we have here right now. So horizontal forces, horizontal forces. Okay, the horizontal forces we have. Uh, now, you see that this R is horizontal, this MG, this is length A here, this is length A here, that is vertical. Now I need to resolve this T over here, okay? So I would be resolving in this direction here and in this direction here. Now guys, can I say that uh, if this is 60 degrees here, this is gonna be 60 degrees here, okay? So this force is gonna be T cos 60, okay? And this one over here is gonna be T sine 60. So I have resolved this tension in the string so that we have the horizontal and the vertical forces. Then why don't you call it 2A? Hmm? The length is 2A. Why oh, don't you call it 2A? No, 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 beta. I'm just resolving the, because uh, if you consider the distance, that is a good idea. Let me mention the distance here as well. The, if I write the distance here, that would be 2A cos 60. And if I want to show the distance here, that would be 2A sine 60, okay? If you take this side as a force here, that is going to be T, the hypotenuse is showing T over here. And if you take this as a distance, so, you know, this is going to be, uh, represent the distance and these components would be according, accordingly written here. Okay, 
So uh, the horizontal forces that we have right now in the all in all this equilibrium state here, we have this R that is equal to R is equal to uh, T sine sixty. R is equal to T sine sixty, and I can say that this R is under root three over two T. That is my first equation. Okay. Now let's consider the vertical forces. The vertical forces. Okay, now for these vertical forces we have, see there is this F upwards here, there is this weight downward here, and then this T cos 60 upward here. So you should allow me to say that F plus T cos 60, that is equal to Mg. And we can say that this F right now here is Mg minus half T. That is my second equation. Okay, because cos 60 is half. So this T cos 60 is going to be minus half T. So let us take the moments about the point A over here, okay? Taking moments about A. Okay, now taking moments about A. So this is the point A over here. First of all, you see that this is the downward force. This is going to create a moment like this, okay? And here is this force in this direction. This is going to create a moment in this direction. And here is this force. So this is also creating, uh, I think this that is clockwise, sorry, anti-clockwise. So there are two anti-clockwise moments here, and there's one clockwise moment here of this uh, weight here. So putting the clockwise moments equal to the anti-clockwise moments here. So this weight, you have to see that what is the distance between this weight and this pivot at A. So can I say if this is 60, this one is 60. So this one is gonna be A sine 60, yes? This is A sine 60. So you, you should allow me to say that A sine 60, A sine 60 times Mg, that is equal to, now you can extend these directions, Fatma, look at this. So this is the direction of the force, this T cos 60 and then look at this distance. Can I say all this distance is 2a sine 60? Yes, 2a sine 60. So we have 2a sine 60 times t cos 60. Okay, and then plus uh, this distance over here, we need to know how much is this distance. And then, you know, there is this force over here. So this distance over here is going to be, how much is this distance? Hmm? In fact, I can show this force here. Basically, we need this much distance here, this much, okay? Can you see that? Because this is the force, this is the point where this T is acting. So I need to know how much is this? This is your T sine. Yeah, this is T sine 60 times 2A cos 60. Absolutely right, 2A cos 60. Now you manipulate all these equations algebraically, you will be able to find the, uh, the range of values of mu here. Now you can see that from here, we can cancel out all the A's, A gone, A gone, and this A gone from here. They all have under root three over two with them, under root three over two gone, under root three over two gone, under root three over two gone, okay? So we have here, uh, yes, yeah, this two is canceled with this two, this two is canceled with this two. So I have left, 
with I am left with two t equal to m g. Therefore, this t is going to be half m g. Okay, this t is going to be half m g. Okay, so you pick this f from here and put the value of t into it. Basically, if I put the value of t into this f here, this would be m g. Minus quarter mg, है ना? That will give me three over four mg. Okay, so f and we have this t here as well. This r, yes, yes, yes. I have substituted this t here. T is half mg, बेटे. I have substituted mg here. Okay, now look at this. I can get this r in terms of mg as well. Let me substitute this t as half mg here. So this is under root three over four mg. Now let's put this r and this uh, f into this relation here. So this f is half mg and That should be less than or equal to this under root three over four mg mu, है ना? So mg gone with mg. This is two two r and there is mu as well. Okay, so this mu has to be greater than or equal to two over under root three. ठीक है? Uh, there is a mistake. Your f was three over four mg. Why am I putting that half mg here? Look at this. This has to be three over. That is a mistake. The mistake done at the very end. Okay. So this is going to be uh, three over under. That is the right answer. Mu is greater than or equal to when you try to. I mean. Um, Rationalize this so that would be mu is greater than or equal to under root three. Now this is the case when we do not want this to slip, and since it says the rod does slip, so that means mu should be less than under root three. That is the final answer here. As so after doing these questions, you can try uh, from this exercise fourteen D question number three, question number. Six and question number seven. Okay, see you guys in the next class with the the remaining part of this chapter. Thank you very much.